couple of years ago, we launched a business called meetfam.com. You've never heard of it. Now we spent over a million dollars in cash money to build it and over a year with a bunch of people's time trying to make it work. And in the end, we killed it. No one used it. Now my goal in this video is to teach you everything I know about validating business ideas before you waste thousands of dollars and years of your life building a product that no one wants. Let's dive in. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell if you haven't done it yet. I put out exclusive office hours for subscribers and I do regular giveaways. Just last year, I gave away my Tesla. I have to walk everywhere. So what is an MVP and why is it important? It's a minimum viable product. Now, this is like when people say they're a minimalist, but they have a bunch of junk in their house. A minimum viable product, the idea is like, what is the quickest, cheapest, fastest thing that you can build to see if customers actually want something? So people say they're building an MVP, but an MVP shouldn't take you 12 months and spend a lot of money and time. And we're gonna get into exactly how you can do it. And by the way, make sure you stick around to the end where I show you how to do it if you have no developer friends or skills or abilities or anything like that. There's things that everyone else out there can do. Let me actually show you MVPs of billion dollar companies today. And the idea that I really wanna get start sparking in your mind is what is the least that I can do to actually build something significant that people would be excited to give me money for. Now, I know a lot of people think, well, Noah, I'm building a high quality, I'm building a unique product, I'm a special snowflake, and yes, you are. But also take a step back and realize, like, you can still build high quality products. The point that you're really trying to do with an MVP is find out if it's a problem that is valuable for people. Now, one of the greatest examples that I'll say before I even show you a lot more of them is the Tesla Model 3. They went out and said, hey, here's what the car is gonna look like. You can't drive it, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, see if you wanna buy it. They sold over one and a half billion dollars of a MVP. And so what they found out is hella people wanted it. Now they're like, all right, let's go ahead and deliver it. Now the beauty of an MVP, and let me show you more examples in just one second, is that if no one wants it, that is a mitzvah, which means blessing. So you can actually go find out what they really do want. And I'm gonna pull up the MVPs of Airbnb, Uber, Craigslist, and Eventbrite. All billion dollar companies are super, super large. The idea here is as we look at Airbnb, is that it's all basic ass. Like there's not a search thing. There's not a mobile thing. They don't have a lot of tech. So Airbnb, it's literally like, where are you going, which days? And I think it was only working in San Francisco. That's amazing. It didn't even have credit card payments. You had to give cash to the host. Can you imagine how awkward that is? There's no fancy map view or anything like that on Airbnb. Next up we have Uber. And do you, know, do you notice the name in the corner? It's actually Uber Cab. Uh, and I did actually take this back in FSF when they launched it. And it was about making their friends feel like they were VIPs going to clubs. And their first prototype wasn't only used by friends, it was, it was just four links and a bright red UC for the logo. Now what's interesting about a lot of these MEPs and one of the things that I, that's kind of surprising about this is that just by getting going, you'll get momentum and maybe if you get a few customers and it's going okay, it'll actually lead you to go with something great. So Uber Black and Uber Cab, which was some of the first things that they did at Uber, didn't actually go that well. But that led them to the Uber X, which is where they then exploded. They're worth $75 billion as a company. Next up is Eventbrite. And I was actually one of the first customers of Eventbrite. Uh, I helped them get going using Community Next. I think we were one of the biggest ticket sellers early on. Uh, and what you notice about their site, it's a really simple HTML page with a simple explanation of the concept. And they actually were really great at actually talking to me, the customer, and saying, hey, what did you like about it? And I would give them the feedback and they would make the changes. Now, one of the things that, that you'll notice in some of these MVPs uh, is that it's basic. It's actually not very complicated. I know nowadays things are way more complicated, but they're not. The whole point I'm trying to make with MVP in this video for you to take away is, what's the simplest form of solving the actual problem? So for Uber, it was driving around. For Airbnb, it was, can I sleep at random people's houses? For Eventbrite, it was these tickets. And lastly, Craigslist, which I think is one of the more famous examples, started as a newsletter to Craig's friends. Get it, Craig's list. It was just an email. You didn't even need to build a website. You can also use one of our products for free, sendfox.com for newsletters. And then by creating that newsletter, he was actually able to prototype, oh wow, this is something that people are excited about. And then he eventually put it on a website because he couldn't be doing the email manually himself. And he's still doing customer support to this day. So when you're doing an MVP, the number one thing that you need to figure out is, what is the problem that you're really solving? And this is what people do last. This is what everyone does. They get to their computer, they get really excited. Maybe they're on their phone, maybe they're talking to their friend. They're like, oh my God, I built this thing. Let me go find customers. Oh, that is exhausting. Now, the other way of thinking about it is what I call the customer first philosophy. And really what you're doing in the simplest form is either A, making yourself the first customer and B, going out to the customers and seeing what problems they are excited to give you those buku bucks or attention for. And that's really what I recommend people thinking about is how do I find the customers first before I really even build anything? So how do you do an MVP? First, offer your product as a service. So if you're wanting to build software, maybe you wanna build an email capture tool, maybe you wanna build a filtering tool, maybe you wanna do SEO, do it as a service. Most things 
you can do manually before you look to automate or scale it. Think about this. You guys heard the word SaaS, software as a service? Do the service and then build the software. Getting the customers and making sure it's something valuable for them is the hard part. And if you can do that, then actually having software that's gonna automate that for you is an easy way to build an MVP and actually have success in your business. So number two, pre-sell your product. So go to the people that you think have problems and say, here's what I'm gonna do for you, buy when, would you like to pay for this? Once you have the customers that have a specific solution and you just have to go figure out how to deliver it, it's trivial. And I know you're thinking that's harder, it's not. Let me give you some examples. One, during COVID, I showed an example of starting a gym business where I do delivery of weights. I just went to people that I knew worked out and said, hey, do you guys want any weights? I just hit up friends. I didn't go post on social or do anything crazy. A lot of people are like, yeah, I want weights. I ballparked the amounts. They sent me money for it. And now I had to go find weights. So I called gym. They said no. I called hotels. They said no. I asked friends who ran gym businesses like Fringe Sport. They said no. By going out and asking and putting myself out there, some person actually referred me to a person of a person of a person who had weights. So really think about pre-selling your product because getting that customer in their money is, is the hard part. Delivering on it is easy. I've also done this with sumojerky.com, with an events business called Whiskey Tastings where I basically sold tickets for whiskey tastings. Then I went and found a venue that could do whiskey tastings as well as when I did caffeine gum, uh, which is a few years ago. I sold caffeine gum. Then I went and found the chef and was able to deliver on it. Everyone wants more customers. If I can solve customers, which is a problem I had and then everyone else had, that would be super valuable. And the first thing that I really wanted to be a customer of is software tools. So to validate if this was actually real, I cold emailed the founder of Imgur and I said, hey, I love your software, can I sell it? And I'll give you $7 for everyone I sell. So first off, I already knew I was gonna be my own customer. Secondly, let's see if it's a problem that he's actually excited to have me solve for him, and he was. And third, I knew that there was other customers because it was super popular, already used on Reddit, which I'm a huge Redditor. Now, from there, actually creating it and all that stuff was pretty trivial. It took me about a weekend and some change to actually put together a really basic ass site. I put it out on Reddit, which is, we've put out a bunch of videos on how that happened. We sold over 200 copies of Imgur Pro. Now, that was like an amazing validation story. And there's some things I really wanna highlight here that are gonna matter in your own MVP journey. So let's just take a hypothetical. Maybe I put it out on Reddit and no one bought it. That's amazing. I just saved a bunch of money and time from something that people didn't want. And now is really the important part. Let me go actually figure out what people do want to be buying. Maybe they didn't want to be buying Imgur Pro. Maybe they wanted something about like DIY beer kits, who knows? But that's the chance where I can actually go and reach out to people and say, hey, none of you guys responded to this, but is there something else you actually want to be responding to? I think, you know, another thing with MVP is people are always like, well, it's not going to scale. And I'm like, you don't even have any customers. <laughs> Why don't you make it a problem? I think that's the phrase I really like thinking about a business, like make it a problem. Like you don't have any customers, make that the problem. And you have too many customers, now you can actually deal with that. There are counter examples. So you can look at Apple. Yes, their products are pretty, but two things. One, the iPod and the iPhone one both look like crap. Only once you know that something's working, yes, then you should keep improving it. Not always have it look like crap. I think that's a, a misnomer that happens in the MVP kind of space. It's like, it doesn't always look like crap. It's just making sure people really want it. And the second thing is, yeah, things look better over time. And yes, you can spend more time building something, but there's a high likelihood you may not know if people actually want it. So I always am trying to encourage people to do pre-sales and pre-commitment as they're doing their MVPs to know that customers actually want it. Make sure to hit subscribe and that notification bell if you haven't done that yet. I put out exclusive content and we work really hard to help you on your business journey. It means a lot if you can hit that subscribe button. Noah, how can I start a company without a developer? Now taking a step back, Think about how can you start a company that is easy for you to start? I'll say that one more time. How can you start a company that's easy for you to start? Now think about this. I worked at Facebook, I worked at Mint, I worked at Intel. I had a really large Silicon Valley network at the time, but I didn't have a lot of people who were just gonna guarantee buy me from things. But I did know that, hey, if I can get software on products that I like, I could probably spread that message to other startups in Silicon Valley, relatively easy. And I knew in Silicon Valley, I could probably find developers because I had friends that were developers to help me build a site later. I didn't use the Silicon Valley developer to get started. Now, for you, when you're getting your business going, where do you have an advantage? Because if it's not in developing, it's not gonna get easy for you, straight up. And an MVP can be for any type of business. If you wanna do a bakery, you don't need to open a storefront. You could sell things out of your house to your friends. Nike, uh, yeah, Nike, he sold it out of the back of his car to get going. Yeah, they're a billion dollar company. So the benefit of not knowing how to code is that you can actually be scrappy and really focus on the hard part, which is, can I actually find customers that wanna pay me the money? People think that having money is an advantage. Having money could actually be a disadvantage. Use the fact that you don't have any developers and you don't have any money to be really creative and really focus on, all right, is this something people really want and how do I get money to prove that they actually do?
Now, if you really can't help yourself and you want to code and that's the way you think you're going to do your MVP, there are so many no code solutions. You can go check them all out on AppSumo.com. We have literally hundreds of them out there. One of the best no code solutions that I think is still really underrated is Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets. 100% free and you can run a lot of different businesses just off those alone. Now, there's a few other tools out there that I, did re I would recommend for you to check out. So Squarespace, WordPress and Card for building landing pages all mostly free or very affordable. Now, one of the things you have to be mindful of is as you go the no code route is don't get addicted to the no code movement. And I see a lot of people getting really like, oh, no, I love no code. No code is not the problem. The problem is what do my customers really want and which of these solutions will help me deliver on that? So when should you hire a developer? When you actually know you have customers. So for me, I use a guy named Muhammad in Pakistan and for $50, we launched the site pretty much in a weekend and I was able to see really, really quickly whether I was gonna have customers or not. And guess what? It was instantly obvious that people were excited to buy software deals online at AppSumo.com. Now, if you like this video and you wanna hear more how to start a million dollar business this weekend, check out this video right up here. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. I love you and I'll see you out there.